Welcome to Defenders, Dr. William Lane Craig's weekly class at Johnson Ferry Baptist Church in Atlanta. For more information concerning the subjects on which Dr. Craig speaks, visit our website at reasonablefaith.org. You'll find articles, compelling debates, audio video downloads, an interactive forum, and many more resources. That's reasonablefaith.org. A week ago, I commented on the recent discoveries at CERN, or measurements of CERN, of neutrinos traveling faster than the speed of light, and explained how this actually vindicates the physical interpretation of special relativity theory that was defended by H.A. Lorentz. In the ensuing week, there have been a couple of media commentaries on this discovery that Uh, just sort of made me roll my eyes because of the theological implications they seem to think this has. And I wanted to share these with you because it provides quite a contrasting point of view. The first comes from uh, Charles Krauthammer, who uh, on October 7th uh, made this comment. uh, This is an excerpt of his full column. He said, something must have been wrong to account for a result that if we know anything about the universe is impossible. It has to be impossible, because if not, everything we know about the universe is wrong. Now, that, that's pretty bad, you know, if everything we know about the universe is wrong, that, we're in big trouble. He says it means that Einstein's relativity theory is wrong, not just inaccurate, not just flawed, but deeply, fundamentally, indescribably wrong. It means that the standard model of subatomic particles that stands at the center of all modern physics is wrong. Nor does it stop there. This will not just overthrow physics. Astronomy and cosmology measure time and distance in the universe on the assumption of light speed as the cosmic limit. Their foundations will shake as well. There must be some error, because otherwise everything changes. We shall need a new physics, a new cosmology, new understandings of past and future, of cause and effect. Then, shortly and surely, new theologies. So this will shake even the foundations of theology as well. Uh, Well, I think, as you can see from my previous comments, this is an unduly alarmist reaction uh, to these discoveries. Um, All that these discoveries would require at most would be simply a change of the physical interpretation of special relativity to an interpretation along Lorentzian lines, uh, which posits a privileged reference frame and relations of absolute simultaneity in the universe. Um, In any case, I think Krauthammer's reaction is way overdrawn because cosmology and astrophysics is not based on the special theory of relativity. It's based on the general theory of relativity, which supersedes special relativity. And in general relativity, there is a cosmic time which is independent of the observer. This is a cosmic time which is the same for any observer in the universe, regardless of his state of motion. And this cosmic time measures the duration of the universe. So when cosmologists say that the universe has existed for 13.7 billion years, they don't mean just in the Earth's frame of reference or some other particular frame of reference. They mean this cosmically. This is the the universal time that measures the duration of the universe for anyone uh, in the general theory of relativity. And therefore, uh, I think Krauthammer's reaction is, is a little bit like Chicken Little saying that the sky is falling. Now, I think we can forgive a political pundit uh, for misinterpreting the impact of these results. But what about a professional physicist? Well, Victor Stenger is a retired a physicist who has made a name for himself in the internet infidel circles by his uh, attacks upon Christian theism. He is a very determined critic of Christianity on the contemporary scene. And he had an article in the Huffington Post 
on this result in which he also sought to draw theological implications from the result. He notes, unlike Krauthammer, that it is perfectly consistent with relativity theory to have faster than light particles called tachyons. These are particles that travel always at superluminal velocities, and that's no problem in STR. But he says they imply that cause and effect are interchangeable. He says, consider the famous duel between Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton on July 11, 1804. An observer moving by less than the speed of light with respect to the participants would have seen the bullet from Burr's gun enter Hamilton's lower abdomen. However, another observer moving faster than light would have seen the bullet emerge from Hamilton's abdomen and enter Burr's gun. So, he says, did Burr kill Hamilton? Or did Hamilton kill Burr? Which is the cause and which is the effect? Well, this is, I think, a real misrepresentation of the situation. First of all, the language of seeing, you need to understand, is purely metaphorical. Uh, this is really misleading if, if taken literally. It isn't a matter of what you really see or observe in these different reference frames. Rather, as we saw when I talked about how cosmologists, or, or relativity theorists rather, calculate the simultaneity of distance events, it's a matter of what you calculate to be simultaneous with some event in your vicinity. It's not a matter of what you observe it's a matter of running the equations and making the calculations. Um, and the question then that arises would be, why would an observer who's moving faster than light, an observer associated with a tachyon's reference frame, why would he use light signals to compute distance simultaneity? After all, if he sends a light signal to some event that he's going to, he's going to get there first, right? <laughs> Why would he use light signals to uh, compute the simultaneity of dis distant events? Um, so these tachyons, uh, if you use them to figure out what is simultaneous at dis distant events, send a tachyon signal and then calculate when you get it back and what would be an event halfway in between, what this would actually do would help to determine quite different relations of simultaneity. In that case, then, of the tachyonic observer would not see uh, some later event happen before some earlier event. But in any case, what would happen in the, the scenario Stenger envisages is not a reversal of cause and effect. What the tachyon observer would calculate um, would be the bullet exiting out of Hamilton's abdomen and then going in through the barrel of Burr's gun and causing an implosion where it would then lodge in Burr's gun. Now, does that mean, therefore, that that's what really happened? That the cause of the implosion in Burr's gun is that somehow a bullet lodged in Hamilton's abdomen suddenly came out of it, came out of his abdomen and traveled through space and went right down the barrel of this guy's gun? causing an implosion, that would surely seem absurd. That The very fact that you can't reverse causality plausibly in a case like this suggests that the simultaneity relations that are being calculated here are simply wrong. That the, the cause is the firing of the gun, and then the effect is the entering of the bullet into the abdomen. But it would be absurd to see this as uh, the bullet exiting from the abdomen causing the implosion in the chamber of the gun. So what, what the, the tachyon observer is really seeing is not an inversion of cause and effect. He's simply seeing the, the, uh, the effect before he calculates the cause. In his reference frame, the effect occurs, and then the cause comes uh, later so that there's an inversion of the time order on these tachyonic uh, particles. But again, that's only if you use this Einstein convention of measuring simultaneity by using um, light signals. Now, it doesn't upset 
the causal relation between firing a gun and somebody's dying. Nobody would think that the gun firing is being caused by Hamilton having a bullet in his abdomen, which suddenly comes out. So I think that uh, when Stenger says, did Burr kill Hamilton and Hamilton kill Burr, that the question is just malformed. It's clear that Burr killed Hamilton, and Hamilton didn't in any sense kill Burr. If anything, the bullet coming out of Hamilton simply went into Burr's gun and lodged there for some reason, which, again, doesn't make sense. But in any case, Stenger goes on to say, if confirmed, the reported result from CERN or any future observation of superluminal motion will not lead to the overthrow of Einstein's theory of relativity. Its significance will be to overthrow the distinction between cause and effect, uh, which uh, to my mind is simply absurd and would give good reason for thinking that this person is not accurately calculating simultaneity relations. He says, at worst, Einstein might be faulted for taking causality a little too seriously. Finally, he advises, you might want to ponder what effect the demise of causality would have on the notion of God as the ultimate cause of all there is. The implication is that theists can no longer say that God is the cause of all that exists because you've destroyed the notion of causality. Well, I, again, I'm afraid that is just completely uh, mistaken. There are no theological consequences of this nature at all. God isn't dependent upon the exchange of light signals to figure out what events in the universe are simultaneous with each other. Um, if God is in time, then he would have a universal reference frame in which he would know the absolute simultaneity of events, wholly apart from using light signals to determine the simultaneity of different uh, distant events. So the use of light signals to determine simultaneity is just a convention adopted by finite, limited observers who don't have God's universal frame of reference and perspective. Now, if God is in time, his reference frame would be the privileged frame. God's frame of reference would be the true frame of reference, and that would be exactly what Lorentz believed, that this is the privileged reference frame. And Lorentz actually saw this. There was a very interesting article by Lorentz where he said, we can imagine a world spirit in who uh, understood all of the events in the universe at once and who would be able to determine immediately the simultaneity of different events in the universe without any appeal to physical signals whatsoever. And he said such a being would have relations of absolute simultaneity. Well, that's exactly the position that God would find himself in if God exists in time. So I think Stenger's attempt to exploit uh, this result for the purposes of... Uh, atheism uh, are really uh, uh, unsuccessful and it doesn't have these sort of implications at all. For more resources from Dr. William Lane Craig, visit our website at reasonablefaith.org. You'll find articles, debates, audio video downloads, and much more. That's reasonablefaith.org. The copyright for this material is owned by Dr. William Lane Craig.